Paula Harris and uh, Christy Laird and others who are working and taking what we're learning from Achieving the Dream and Developmental Education, Ted Miller, lots of other folks involved with this. We have concluded that uh, we need to get smarter about how we deploy instruction as it relates to those folks who come ill-prepared for collegiate level work. And so to that end, we have a kind of a study committee, a work group focusing on uh, looking at a foundation studies department perhaps beginning in, uh, in early January to say that we think it's time to get focused and serious about this issue, that we need to apply full-time faculty to this issue. Uh, and in so doing, we look at the, the performance of students, we monitor them, we have the continuity of faculty say, I see how this person progressed from 095 to 098, I see where those weaknesses are, we can build and help them uh, be successful. Uh, in this particular matter alone, we are leading the nation. Uh, there are just a few colleges nationwide who are deploying full-time faculty to developmental education. Absolutely believe it's the right thing to do, and the, the research shows it's the right thing to do. Legislation, can we skip this one? Uh, whoa, I almost did. <laughs> At the federal level, uh, we continue to see some changes up there. We're not, as I mentioned, we didn't see the AGI funding come out as we thought we would. Uh, there continue to be uh, lots of discussions about Pell. Um, we continue to make the case uh, with our um, 1,400 other community colleges around the country to say, you know, um, you're really not... Uh, living up to your obligation to, uh, to students and, and funding education at the level that you should. Uh, some of you have heard me say that I think our social contract is in decay, meaning that you know, taxation is a part of paying it forward. It's a, as Jefferson would say, it's, it's a responsibility of all of us if we want a democratic society. Uh, what we hear and more and more even from some legislators and Congress people saying, you know, why should, why should we um, have students and staff and, and anybody who's a citizen essentially, pay more taxes so that someone can go on and get an education and make more money. Uh, that's an interesting equation. Uh, we hear it here in our own community. This year, starting July 1, the citizenry of Jackson County will pay then less than 10% of the total overall cost of running the college. 9.9%, .9%, meaning just a whisker shy of 10 cents out of every dollar that we spend at JCC will come from the local taxpayers. They love us, they think we're doing a great job, they just don't want to pay anymore. And the conversation in focus groups is along the line of, uh, I don't want to pay any more taxes for you because that person is just going to go, these people are going to get another job, they're going to make more money, how does that help me? They don't draw the connection between the fact that, gosh, if we have a better educated populace, we have less crime, we have less health issues, I mean, lots, they, don't, they don't draw those uh, econometric sociographic equations, and that's unfortunate. Uh, so we need to continue to try to drive that message out there uh, we continue to monitor this at the, at the federal level. Also, a more interesting matter is that there was a shot uh, fired across the bow from the Department of Education against um, the Higher Learning Commission. This is our one of six regional accrediting bodies. That's the body that um, accredits us under AQIP, uh, Academic Quality Improvement uh, Process. Uh, they said that, uh, and they've been pushing this for the last few years, but they believe that the federal government should be the accreditor of all higher education in the nation, not peer groups as it is now. Remember, we went through the process. We had some colleagues from higher education institutions coming saying, we know education, we're in education. Let's do some comparisons. Let's look at some metrics here. Let's see what you're doing and offer some judgment. The federal government thinks they know better. Uh, and the concerning part to me is that the first shot was across the bow of the Higher Learning Commission, which is the largest of the six regional accreditors, saying, we don't think you made a good decision about this college over here. It happened to be for a private nonprofit. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of scrambling going on about that, and they happen to be an AQIP institution, so I'm watching very closely about what the implications are for JCC. A little closer to home, uh, Senate Bill 1151, uh, they've still got uh, estimates. In fact, that number of $300 million has actually changed now. We're actually in, in excess of the $300 million shortfall. I don't know what they're doing up there, but they're not dealing with this issue. Politically, I think it is unwise. If I wanted to run for governor, for example, I'm the president of the, Senate, or the Speaker of the House, I'm Andy Dillon, I want to be elected governor, I just think it's the height of hubris for me to lead the legislature without a budget passed, come down to you all down here wherever you are and say, vote for me as governor. Let me see, you're the Speaker of the House, you didn't pass a budget and you want my vote. Hmm, I don't think that works very well. They, they seem to be more clairvoyant than me on what the reaction is going to be of that. My best judgment is we are not going to see a balanced budget till the end of July. I think it's a 50-50 proposition that we may look at a continuation budget at the end of the uh, fiscal year for the state, which you know ends uh, end of September, September 30th. So 
Um, the House and Senate are in the debate about what they want to do with us as community colleges. The uh, Senate's looking to whack us by 3%. Um, we are, uh, we are that would be about $325,000 for us. Uh, the House is advocating that, uh, you know, kind of leave us alone. Uh, while all this has been going on, there have been some other interesting changes. Uh, they have changed the MIPSERS contribution, so we've moved from 16 plus to about 15, 19 plus percent. That decision alone costs this institution today about $520,000, increasing MIPSERS costs. Uh, plus, uh, you know, in the discussion here about uh, wanting to uh, increase the contribution from employees who are participating in MIPSERS by reducing them 3%, coming up with this notion of uh, encouraged retirement, which uh, had to be um, finalized by employees last Friday. Uh, it's an interesting uh, a piece for me just to think about the finances of that. The early retirement is um, 1227, which I've uh, already mentioned. Uh, before I leave that, I might also mention that the, the local property tax issue here uh, has gone down. Uh, we have not exercised the Headley Amendment for, I think this is the third year. Yeah, third year. The Headley Amendment, as you know, was designed to keep having huge increases in local property taxes and was tied to inflation. Uh, we've not had to exercise uh, that, that kind of forced um, um, holding down of runaway uh, in property tax cost increases. Uh, we've not had to do that just because property values have fallen off. Uh, the impact of uh, local property taxes here, uh, based on foreclosures, we've got, I don't know, it's like 1,500 homes in foreclosure now. They're dozing some of them in. Um, the impact of um, a, a decline in new home starts, uh, for us in Jackson County, that will uh, be about $210,000 in reduction in local property taxes. So that shoves us down to um, a little less than 10%. Students starting this fall semester will be paying uh, just a, a hair shy of 62% of the full burden cost of running this institution. So when you see students, thank them. <laughs> thank you for paying my check. Uh, there's a good reason that uh, we, we pay attention to what students are looking for, that we, we listen more and more than we ever have before using focus groups and the like, because we want to understand what their needs are and whether they're, what, what are the supports that they need from us. So um, we are a student-supported institution. We're an assisted institution by the state and the local property taxpayers. Baccalaureate legislation is moving pretty rapidly. Uh, there's a Senate subcommittee meeting called for the 23rd uh, tomorrow. I'll be meeting with the vice chair of the committee, uh, Bill Hardiman, who happens to be running for congressman. Um, he is uh, going to meet with us and a number of our students from our Men of Merit program and also our Sisters of Strength program, talking about how for this particular audience of students that we would be able to uh, provide assistance to them by uh, addressing being time-bound and place-bound and not, as a result not able to get a baccalaureate degree. Baccalaureate legislation, legislation provides for five areas. Uh, marine technology, cement technology, culinary arts, um, let's see, uh, nursing, baccalaureate science nursing, and also uh, nuclear technology. So uh, we'll see those programs. Those are the ones that we're looking at, and uh, we're pushing pretty hard for that. So we'll see what happens after the uh, 23rd. But um, it continues to uh, move at a pretty aggressive clip. There are a fair number of people in our community, included in the legislature, just kind of ticked off at the universities. They're kind of slow and plodding, and they're not as responsive. They've got runaway costs. Uh, and so I think um, uh, this is a way to get the attention of the universities, which may be the signal that the, that the legislature is trying to send. The P20 database, uh, this is something we continue to monitor about how we're tracking students from the time they enter kindergarten all the way up to uh, grad school, um, finding out how we can assist them, where are they getting into trouble academically. Uh, we're probably a year off from having a lot of this stuff fully put into place. They're supposed to uh, get some uh, portals established and get agreement on terminology and so forth here by August, September, October range. I think by the time we get everything flushed out, we're probably six to nine, uh, if not